Bianchi on our program, and uh, we are having a conversation with Aaron Brown today. Bianca? Oh, Mr. Jones, I was just thinking, isn't it funny? A couple years ago, I remember sitting here with Aaron Brown, <laughs> and we were having the conversation about the handicap parking space. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there wasn't a lot of, um, it wasn't enforced that much, remember? And, yeah. and then right after that, it seemed like such a big change for everybody to make these spaces available. And now it's because other people were parking there and it seemed like too many maybe. Mm -hmm. And now it's like normal. And I see that so many more have come up and it's really nice to see. And I always think about that show and mm -hmm. the fear that people had with just having that parking space. Mm -hmm. So now it's really nice to be able to learn from Aaron on what other things that we can do as a community mm -hmm. to help out that might seem little, yeah. Crazy at first, but it won't in, mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. Every change will feel insane, crazy, challenging. What am I doing? Why should I do this? That's part of the journey. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's really part of the journey. One of our hot topics, and I always say this is a hot topic issue in the Bahamas, is about disabled parking. Mm -hmm. Beyond accessibility, disabled parking is the most, and I feel like it's the most because it it touches on a side of you that really makes you realize that you really don't care if you park in the blue spot because you're just trying to get in there and get out. Mm -hmm. And this is why the interaction sometimes when someone say to you, do you have a blue decal? You know, you're parked there or do you need that? Well, why are you asking me that? And it, it has that type of reaction because it's pricking at your conscience. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had where I pulled into a blue spot and didn't even notice that the person who was in the car was or either coming to the car, didn't have a decal, and they go, I am so sorry. Seeing you, like seeing you pull up here, I feel so bad, I will never do this again. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel those moments are needed though. Mm -hmm. Those moments are needed beyond the legislation or, or other adjustable fines that you're going to be fined. Those moments are the moments that we look for. And so in disability inclusion training, what it enables persons across the board, whether you're just a, a regular citizen that just wants to know more, you might have an organization, whether it's disability centric, or whether it's about youth empowerment or, or women empowerment, whatever it is, and you want to reach more persons in your target area, whether you have a business that provides a product or a service, disability inclusion tackles branding, customer service, even a human resource area. So if you want to hire more persons because, let's just be honest, the Disability Rights Act now speaks about employment. If you have a certain amount of numbers, you need a certain percentage of persons living with disabilities as employees. And so you want to start thinking about these conversations beyond the fines. You want to start thinking about them. And so what Aaron Brown Connects provides is that space, that safe space mm -hmm. where you can come and you can learn these things in real time and interact. And please, persons living with disabilities, this is for you also. Mm -hmm. I am not just, or we are not just training the non-disabled. It is my goal and my mission for Aaron Brown Connects Disability Advocacy and Inclusion Management is to train persons living with disability with different skills so that when a business call and say we'd like to do training, I'm sending out that person to train because I'm a certified trainer. So what is it for me to keep this to myself? Do you know what the numbers are, the statistics of how many people are living with disabilities? We in don't the have correct numbers, and I would employ, if they need assistance on how to do that in the most cost effective way, please contact me because it needs to be done. We don't have very clear cut, cut lines because it's not really have been included in the census. When they do the census, the questioning, and it's not really included. But the most recent thing that I do have um, information, it has a um, statistic of uh, over 10,000 persons who are homeowners who are living with disabilities. So when we think of disability too, we think about they don't spend no money. They don't, you know, why should I attract them? They don't have any money to spend. They're always asking for something. Mm -hmm. Let's be realistic. Everybody, everybody's money is the same. Everybody has to thrive and live 
I go to the grocery store. I buy gas. My kids go to school. Money and disability market is there and available. Mm -hmm. How are you tapping into? So these homeowners now are in this grouping because they were able to garner that. So I would encourage even businesses, if you have application and events, if you have registration forms that people fill out, um, small business development that, that's going on now, and when you register, they change their application process where they include those questions. Mm -hmm. You then have statistics that that's you can right. now say, rather than waiting for the census to do it, each of us can take a part. Mm -hmm. That's why I said we can bring it down to bite size. You know, it's, it, it is overwhelming, even for a non-disabled person. But imagine those living it. What is a disabled person? And, and I ask that question, mm -hmm. uh, even though it seems a little off, because we believe that a disabled person is a person with, uh, who do not have legs or one leg or with a, a limb off. Mm -hmm. uh, what is a disabled person in your mind? Well, in my mind, it's totally different from what society dictates it is. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to first speak of what society labels as a disabled person, it is anyone that has some type of impairment. And that impairment can be a visual or we group it in physical, which is visual, deaf, blind, um, wheelchair users. Um, then we have intellectual. So, and that's like Down syndrome, um, autism. We have them in different groupings. Learning disabilities. So if you're dyslexic, if sometimes you, you see things and then not really the way it is, it's a learning disability. And then you also have mental disabilities. Right. And so we have different groupings across the board. So disability or being a person living with um, a disability means that you're living through life with some type of of challenge or impairment where you have to adapt or you need adaptive equipment or you need use of, of, of um, diverse skills and, and infrastructure in order to support you to live your most independent life. There are man, many people, um, Aaron Brown, who have had a hip replacements mm -hmm. uh, or knee replacements. Yes. Um, uh, and uh, you see them uh, going to into various um, and they have to walk long distances mm -hmm. uh, and you wonder whether or not you know they ought to be qualified for the blue spaces well I will say this I said earlier that for the rest of my life I will be an amputee mm -hmm. my leg will not grow back it's it's there it's gone mm -hmm. there it shall not come back when you have those type of surgeries, you're also placed, depending on the level of it, you're permanently impaired because either you, you may not be able to sit down for long periods, you may not be able to walk distances. Those are forms of disabilities. Mm. And you have temporary disabilities and you have permanent ones. And that's where a, a format needs to be created. Because when you get a decal, when you get a disability parking decal, at this time, we only have one. That's for everybody. Mm. And that's not effective. It's not sustainable because I may have a temporary disability. Even pregnancy is a temporary disability. Sometimes you have to be bedridden. You can't walk for long distances. So even making provisions for those type of things. We need to have real conversations rather than just thinking the word disability or disabled is such a negative thing that you don't ever ever want to have that in life it is a part of life it can be temporary or it can be permanent mm -hmm. yeah yes um well you know i i, I ask that because i i know there are a number of people who are in their you know late 60s early mm -hmm. 70s mm -hmm. who who have these various um uh, ailments and um uh, sometimes uh, people do not believe that they ought to be considered uh, among the disabled group. So, and sometimes they don't you know, want to be. A gentleman came to see me and had to walk upstairs uh, mm -hmm. to my office and he was struggling. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I consider it a, a, a form of, of being disabled, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so your disability inclusion training, mm -hmm. um, is that... Um, across the board for all of these um, 
uh, situations? Yes. What it does, it's a it's Introduction to Disability 101, basically. 101, okay. Yes, it has different levels to it. And for me, I am more concerned to always have an open conversation about business, disability business, um, inclusive business models, because that's where we have businesses that are losing money because they're not inclusive. That's where you're not, your customer, your employees are not giving your customers who are living with disabilities, seen and unseen, the proper interaction that make them want to come back. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're in the age of social media where we complain about everything, rightfully so, but it's very clear. If I'm dissatisfied, I'm not going to keep that to myself. <laughs> I'm going to tell somebody about it. And don't mm -hmm. let me back it up with pictures and videos. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. But disability inclusion training helps to integrate your model, your business model. So, and if you're an organization, because people just really don't understand how do I tap into this, it then teaches you how to interact with visually impaired, with deaf, with um, learning disabilities, um, intellectual disabilities, how to brand your organization, market it, and also not only to attract them, but help to build that skill mm -hmm. for persons living with disabilities and non-disabled persons. Mm -hmm. This changes our nation's mindset, but it also our outlook and our representation on a global world. The government, our government has signed on to the United Nations um, Sustainable Development Goals. And if you Google that, if you even remotely look at that, the one word you will see over and repeatedly is inclusive. Mm -hmm. So we need to identify as, mm -hmm. as a nation how inclusive we really want to be. And how are we have the opportunity to be a model nation for the Commonwealth, for the Caribbean, because any changes that we make will be felt immediately. It's, it would not take years in order for it to be felt here. It will be felt immediately because persons are going to be represented in the public. Branding, if, if they see a person in a wheelchair buying something at Kelly's, Yes. If I'm home seeing that on television, I'm going, oh, should I? I might as well go. I think we can leave. Mm -hmm. We have businesses that are opening up and they're spending so many money on so much money on marketing, but persons in the disabled community don't see themselves in that marketing. Mm -hmm. They don't. So what am I to aspire to? Am I not to want to thrive? Um, um, is there not career um, areas or, or things that I can tap into? Because I wasn't born with a disability. I have a business management degree, uh -huh. certification, skills that I can use, but a lot of times if you cannot pass my disability, you will never tap into those things. Yes, mm -hmm. just on that note, I was researching on the social media about tourism and how mm -hmm. people are handling it that have disabilities. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, warning, warning, if you're going to the Bahamas, they do not offer uh, vehicles that, very many vehicles that can take a wheelchair up. I think that they said that there was three on the island and that sometimes all three were not working, mm -hmm. so they gave a warning to book it months in advance. Plus, they said that it was very costly service well, also. Three, what, 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 uh, the vehicles oh, to carry okay. um, wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. And another uh, big complaint was even some of our, our largest resorts here do not have the service to even, they don't have a shuttle service for somebody in a wheelchair to go from one location to the other mm -hmm. in the resort. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Bahamas is a destination where a lot of people would love to come and this is a problem that they are giving a warning about yeah. um, so that you can't, you really can't mm -hmm. get around easily. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's take a look at, uh, we have a video, right? Um, let's take a look at this video here. Um, that uh, what are you doing on this video? <laughs> Everything, <laughs> but right. the video gives you importance of what why disability inclusion is important. Okay, let's take a look at it. Every joy, every triumph, every tear, every heartbreak has made me who I am and is shaping who I will be. Meet Erin Brown, a mother, an athlete, and a cancer survivor. Talking to Miss Erin Brown. We led in the competition by Erin Brown. I got a leg. I was donated a free leg. 
And I said, you know what? I'm going to go for that goal. My name is Aaron Brown. The inspiration behind Aaron's story. So to be alive is, is manifesting everything that you want by actually doing it. And immediately after getting an x-ray done, I was told to go to Florida. She said at the time, the stage four cancer had eaten away at her left femur to the point where the bone was fingernail thin. So she opted for amputation. Speaking as an amputee and as a cancer survivor, I've experienced not being able to get into places or having to the type of medicine or regimens that I would need. It's not available here in the Bahamas, so then I have to think about leaving my family. I was able to travel from the Bahamas to come to Chicago, Illinois to meet with David Rotter. And he provides persons with adaptive limbs. I've received a running leg, and a cycling leg. She has the will, and now she has the equipment. Here I am in Houston. Everything that I didn't imagine that would happen, happened. Did I fall? Yes, I did. Did I hurt myself? I surely did. Am I sore? Am I tired? I am all the above. But what I am not is defeated. Here in the Bahamas, there's a lot that needs to be done gearing towards disability. So I started a foundation where we provided financial assistance, resources, equipment, things that would make it a little bit easier for persons with disability. With total transparency, she revealed her prosthetic leg, showing that the road may now be different, but she can still live a full and fulfilled life. I am still a mother. I am still Bahamian. I am still an athlete. In the Caribbean in general, because the Bahamas is definitely not the only place that feel that persons with disability may not be their best assets. And I honestly feel that I can change that way of thinking. They have to see it to believe it. Like we have to physically see something happening in order to then action or invest or put into it. I don't know what God was thinking, but cancer survivor and amputee and single mother and gave me the gift of speaking and the tenacity to just go for it, I, I'm, I'm here. The best stories take you along for the journey, and this journey has just begun. That was a wonderful video, Erin, and um, you know, you have to do more videos like this. It's important that the public is well educated um, on uh, what you call disability inclusion. Yes. Uh, this is very good. When we return, we will speak with Erin Brown some more about um, the various quests that she has um, for going to the Paralympics and uh, generally about disability in our country. We'll come right back. Mm -hmm.